Good evening and welcome to another edition of Linga Musica. I'm James Cassara, music writer for Rapid River Arts Monthly, and we're here on the lovely courtyard at the Great Eagle in Asheville, North Carolina. By we, I mean myself and the great, the one and only Lloyd Cole. Lloyd, welcome to Asheville. Is this your first visit here? This is my first, amazingly, yeah. It's beautiful. Tell what us what about a, it. What a fantastic day. Well, what have I done? I slept, I watched uh, ice hockey at the beer garden, did a little bit of walkabout, took some photos today, had a nice lunch. Fabulous. Fish tacos. Awesome. Welcome. This is about the fifth show of the Small and Tombow Tour, so you're not quite way halfway through. Uh, how's it going so far? Well, it's the fifth of this leg of the tour, but we're getting kind of close to the end of it, almost a year. We've been, uh, we were in Europe at the last fall, and then we were in Australia, then we were back in Europe again. So, we're kind of winding down. Uh, it's, going, it's going great. We had a, a little bit of a break, like about a month before this leg, which helped. You can only tour for so long, and you can only be spontaneous for so long. I understand during the tour you celebrated your 50th birthday, and there was a little bit of a, an interesting aspect to that. Well, I guess so. We were mid-air crossing the international date line, so I think my 50th birthday lasted about three hours. The Mazel Tov, yeah. as my Jewish grandmother used to say. All right, talk a little bit about the band that you put together now, how they came together, and such well, I've, as that. I've been touring uh, like a folk singer, troubadour type thing, solo, for most of the last 10 years. I think I got, finally got kind of good at it, and took it about as far as I could take it, and wondered what am I going to do next. So I wanted to do something which was not just me on stage, but I didn't want to have a rock and roll band. So I've been listening to quite a bit of bluegrass music. Um, and I just thought, well, I love the sound of these instruments. I don't want to make that kind of music, but what would it be like if we took that type of instrumentation and applied it to my songs? And so I just found the two musicians who live close to me that I thought were the best to, asked them. And uh, I learned to play a bit of banjo, and I said, well, if I can learn banjo, so can you, Matt. So Matt learned the banjo, and Mark learned to play the mandolin. And we played in my attic, in my basement, Tuesdays and Thursdays for about a year, figuring out the songs. So we put a lot of work into getting the arrangements the way we want them. Did you write the new songs with that idea in mind? No, I did not. But I did write some of the new songs thinking that this was going to be the way that they were going to be recorded on the album, and that didn't turn out to be the case. How hard was it to take the old songs and sort of make them fit that? Some of them incredibly easy. I mean, Rattlesnake songs fitted without a great deal of effort. I mean, we didn't, we didn't take the old guitar parts and just take away the bass and drums. We found some new, new parts. Uh, perfect skin, the old parts, nearly all the old parts work pretty well. Um, but the surprise songs were occasionally just Mark and Matt would hear something and they'd say, we like this, can we try and do an arrangement? Said, sure, why not? So, I mean, we do one of the songs from Don't Get Weird On Me, Babe, which is a full orchestral song. We play it with just the three of us. No Paul Buckmaster on this no one, No Paul right? Buckmaster, no. So, so it's been, I wouldn't say every song has been easy to figure out, but say we tried to get 50, we've got 40 that we're happy with. Good structure of a good song it lends itself, I think. I think also you find out when you take the production away from a song if it's any good or not. And I'm not going to claim that all of mine passed the test. <laughs> Let's talk about Broken Record, Tappet Records, and this was largely self-financed by people pre-ordering the album, is that correct? No, that, that the, uh, the people, a thousand people bought it before I made it in a special limited edition, expensive version, which raised about 40% of the album budget. The other 60% came from Tapetta and me. Uh, but certainly we could not have made this type of record without those thousand people because it's an old-fashioned record. It's recorded in a studio with musicians to take, mostly live, which is expensive. You know, you can't do it in your attic with your computer. Uh, and probably the budget for the record was unrealistic in respect of how many we might expect to sell worldwide. But that was the record I wanted to make, and my fans wanted me to make the record I wanted to make. So, you know, it was, it was generally, I guess it was kind of a success. Yeah, great. Yeah. It and antidepressant talk a lot about themes of middle age, and you and I are about the same age. I mean, have, are you sort of comfortably moving into middle age and writing about that, or is it more just reflection on things that have gone on in the past, or looking towards the future? I don't really think about it. I just, I just kind of hope my songs will grow with me. I think, 
I'm not a big fan of the 50 year old man still trying to behave like he's 25. Um, I think I might, maybe in the past I might have said I'd like to age gracefully, but now, now I just don't think there's any possibility of that. You're too late for that. It's too late. <laughs> but I, I'm relatively comfortable in my skin. And, and entering different parts of your life naturally gives you new material. If you're going to write, you, you write about things that impact your life. And You know, right now I'm really mad at the IMF. <laughs> You know, 25 years ago it was a girl called Jane, now yeah. it's the IMF. Okay. Your fans are sort of aging along with you too, I, I suspect. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, 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 we no longer go to a town and if there's not a large crowd, say, well, school's out. You know, we might get some students coming to the show, but yeah, my, my crowd is 30s to 50s. You've lived in the States about 20 years now? Yeah, I was 11 years in Manhattan and uh, about 11 years up now in Western Mass. Any any thoughts of ever going back over there where you do have a larger following, I suspect, or are you happy here? You know, I I don't particularly like playing where I live anyway. Okay. So um, that really doesn't impact my decision as to where I want to live. I, I live where I am right now purely out of, out of inertia, really. We moved over, we had kids. They're in school. You don't pull your kids out of school. My oldest boy just starting at NYU. Um, so for a while, you know, we are where we are. In the future, I don't know. I wouldn't mind going to live in Provence. <laughs> but I've no, I've no real, des you know, I've no great uh, desire to go back to the UK for a time. I, I, which isn't to say that I, I, living over here, I think, still makes me feel more European. I mean, it's still sort of a fish out of water. My accent's changed, but I still. I, I know when Memorial Day is now. <laughs> and you don't quite celebrate Fourth of July the way we do. I don't celebrate any of it. <laughs> After the tour, uh, new album in the works um, or new songs written while you're touring? or How's that all? Because you've sort of settled into a, a niche, I guess, a very uh, comfortable niche of an album about every two years. I wish. I don't think it's been quite that good. Antidepressant was 2006. Oh my, okay. Yeah, I'm more like every four years. Um, We've got lots of projects. I'm working with fairly closely now with Tapeta in Germany. Um, we released a box set a couple of years ago of rarities, B-sides, and outtakes, cleaning out the ashtrays. And that was a sort of a, an experiment to see, A, if the box set idea would work. Because so many people are going digital with these things. And I, I was pretty sure my fans didn't want that. I was pretty sure they wanted something to have an old. And it did quite well. Um, there are, I think, three more box sets that we could do if we have time. So the first one we're going to be working on is trying to get the commotions material, which is not in print, back in print, uh, along with some demos and rarities and some live recordings. So I imagine that's probably going to come out before my next record. Will much of that be available through LloydCole.com? Because that's well, a treasure it. trove of stuff. All of it will be, yeah. I mean, every, I, 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 don't do, <laughs> I don't do deals with record companies anymore unless I, unless I get a unless I get a good deal to be able to sell the stuff through my own side. You know, it's, it's part of the sort of the way the economy works for me right now. If I couldn't do that, it, 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 it's, a, it's a substantial part of my, my income sales from the website these days. Fabulous. I'm going to wrap it up with that. Let me put in a plug for Lloyd Cole, the latest album. LloydCole.com, your infinite source for all things Lloyd. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. And found your body somewhere